In the previous video, we installed PyData Archive on PySRV01 and PyAF server and PyAnalysis service on PySRV02. So we see our current configuration on the screen now. So in this video, we're going to start on our post install tasks. So first off, we're going to look at backups. So first up, PyData Archive has archives on it. All of these archives store the time series data coming from sensors. So I don't think I need to uh, lecture you about how important it is to back up these files, but this is all of the data coming from all of the sensors in your plant. If it's lost, really the golden rule of being an administrator, you don't lose data, you've lost data. So backing these up is incredibly important. And the PyData archive has quite a few configuration files in there. So not only backing up the archives is important, but also the PyData archives configuration. So how we do this is we set up a scheduled task here. So we set up a task to execute at 3.15 a.m. By default, it can be changed. And what this scheduled task does is it performs an incremental backup of all the important files on that data archive. So every archive file that is changed, anything containing any of the time series data coming from our sensors that's changed, and all of the configuration that's changed since the last backup. What it does is we choose a folder to back up to. So this is just a folder on the machine. So it'll be pi backup. So in this pi backup folder, it will copy out all of these configuration files and all of the archives. After it's run the first time, it'll run again at 3.15 a.m. tomorrow, any files that are changed. So say we changed this one and maybe we've added another archive file since then, more data has come in from sensors. It will copy those files over. So the file that changed, it'll change that one. It'll copy over the new archive. So this is all well and good, but I can, you're probably, you're probably thinking right now, this isn't really a backup. This is just a file on the same machine as the PyData archive. And you're right, it's not a backup. Well, not yet. So the next step would be to move this off to somewhere else. So usually we'd have a SAN or a NAS network share. We have a SAN and then we'd move the Pi Backup folder. We'll make a copy of the Pi Backup folder over here. So we could do that. You, you can do that with a, a script of your choosing. You can do that in any way you want, but that is a really, really important step because it's not a backup until it's actually moved off the machine. Now, the script that we run at 3.15 a.m., you can add in another line here. We call it a Pi Site Backup. So the extra file copy afterwards but you can also use other software to do that if you want to. Now, with the current state of cybersecurity in the world, a lot of the time this isn't everything that needs to happen as well because the machine still has access to this backup folder. And if there's any malicious software on this machine, if your network is targeted somehow, then everything's still online. Usually the very last step that really needs to happen, especially nowadays, is moving this data off onto a tape, onto some kind of offline media. We're on Pi SIV01 here, and we're gonna start by looking at, well, what backups have been made already. So go to the bottom left-hand corner and click on Start and then up to Pi System Management Tools. So it should be in the recently added. If it's not there, you'll find it under the letter P. The servers we can connect to is right up here, Pi SIV01. Let's check that server. So now we're going to navigate down through Operation and into Backups. Here we go. Now we're going to implement that backup script that we were talking about before. So click on Command Prompt. 
we're going to go to the drive where we've installed Pi. So that is D drive, D colon. Now we need to navigate to the Pi directory. The easiest way to navigate there is to use CD and then a little shorthand, percent, Pi server, percent. So that navigates us into our installation directory for Pi. If you're interested, the folders we have in here, there's a bunch of them, ADM, bin, dat, log, setup. We're going to go into a few of these uh, throughout the class, but right now we're going to go into the ADM folder. ADM folder contains administrative tools. So CD ADM. Now we're going to run our backup script in install mode. So pi backup and then give it a target. So a target folder we'd like to back up to. In our case, I'm just going to back it up to E drive pi backup with the install flag set. This will create a Windows scheduled task at 3.15 a.m. to do an incremental backup into the E drive pi backup folder. Let's do that. Okay, success. Let's take a look. So go back down to the start menu again. And let's take a look at scheduled tasks. So I'm just going to start typing schedule and task scheduler comes up. So let's navigate into there. Once it's open, we can click on task scheduler library. And we see we have a Pi server backup at 3.15 a.m. every day. We can change this if we want. We can go in and go to the properties of this and change the time if we wanted to. 3.15 is pretty good for us though. So if we go up to our system management tools, we've still got no backups. It's because we haven't actually run this yet. We've just created the task to do so. Let's just right click and run it now. So its status has changed to running. But while that's running, let's take a look at E drive Pi backup. So I've opened up Windows File Explorer here. Going into E drive, Pi backup is there now. and looks like we've got some folders already created in there. So these weren't here before. This is all being done by our script. Now we can watch these files change over the next few minutes while the backup happens. And it looks like we've finished. That pre-commit folder is gone and we only have a single log file here. So inside our backup folder, we've got an ADM, arc, dat, and log. So it's copied over all of the configurable files from our Pi installation directory and also all of the archives since the last time it was backed up. So in archive, we've, we've got one archive with an annotation file. We're going to take a closer look at that in future videos. So we're pretty happy with this. Let's go back to system administration tools and refresh. So it looks like we've done an incremental backup right now and it's successful. So there's one very last thing we need to discuss about backup which is asset framework server backup. So down in the bottom right hand corner here we have asset framework server and it uses Microsoft SQL Server as a backend. So we've got a SQL Server database here it's called PyFD. This PyFD database needs to be backed up, copied off, at a frequency of your choosing. In this video, we discussed Pi backups and really the first thing you should do after installing a Pi data archive, set up this local copy backup and decide what strategy you're going to use to copy this local copy off.